Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Insanity. Insanity. Would you be kind enough to enlighten me of the definition of insanity? The words came from the mouth of a masked man and were directed to the two cops who sat on the floor with their hands tied behind their back. The two cops had no response for the man as their mouths were duct taped. I said, what is the definition of insanity? The masked man repeated himself in a raised tone. Still no response from the cops he pushes his chair back in frustration and gets up, turns his head and walks towards them. He crouched and was now at eye level with the two cops. He fixed his gaze on one of the cops who had a bleeding eye. Are you ignoring me? I asked you a question. The masked man shouts and reaches for his holster resting his hand on the pistol without drawing it. He takes a closer look at the cop, who is still quiet. Without a warning he draws his pistol and whips the cop across his face making his torso hit the muddy floor. The masked man then stands up, pauses for a few seconds with his back turned, and starts walking back and forth. Small murmurs of conflict within himself could be heard while he tapped his head with the pistol. You'll never win. You'll never win. I will win. I always win. Why do you keep doing the same thing, over and over and over again? The result is always me winning. I always come out on top. Just leave me alone. Is that too much to ask? But I'm the bad guy, right? Me. A bad guy. My daughter thinks I'm great. And she's honest. I raised her right. The masked man pauses for a second. He pulls out a lighter and a cigarette from his coat pocket then lights the cigarette. He picks up his gun and before taking his mask off he says, I want you to see your killer in his eyes. You did this. I have consequences. He rests the gun's barrel on the cop's skull. I don't want to do this. I didn't want to do this but you forced my hand. You pigs always put your nose where it doesn't belong. Last time I let you go because I'm not a bad guy. But this time, you just had to keep pushing it, didn't you? The man puts his mask back on, turns to the other cop, and taps his shoulder with the pistol. Hey, hey, wake up, I think that's her. Sam jumps from the horrible nightmare and sits upright. He looks to his side as his partner points to a car driving by. His partner, Jeff, starts tailing the car as Sam opens the glove box and takes out a packet of cigarettes. Come on, man. I thought you quit them cancer sticks after that thing happened. And you can't talk to her reeking of cigarette breath. That ain't no way to talk to a lady brother. An exhausting sigh escapes Sam's mouth as he puts the packet back in the glove box. Why do you always have to be right? Sam says. The lady pulls over to the side on the highway, but doesn't get out of her car. Do you want to do this? Or should I? You don't have to. Jeff offers. Without moving his lips Sam gets out of the cop car and starts walking towards the lady's car. On arrival he knocks on the lady's window and gestures her to roll it down with his left index finger. After she did. Without saying a word he signals her to step out of her car with the same finger. The lady steps out of her car and walks towards Sam. What's this about Sam? Sam takes off his hat with his right prosthetic arm. He looks down at the lady who was about a foot shorter than him. Sam stood at six feet two inches. In his raspy voice he starts, I know I went MIA for a while after what me and your husband went through. I couldn't do anything for months. I couldn't even talk for a couple of weeks after the incident. That night changed everything for everyone in this town. Sam's words were cut short when tears started running down the lady's face. Did you at least catch the bastard? She asks. Sam stays silent for a few seconds trying to gather words to explain to the lady that they were still working on it. I promise we will catch him. We are still working on it Illa. Illa bursts out in anger. You don't get to use that word in front of me. Promise is a strong word Sam. Promises ain't gone bring my husband back. So don't you dare promise me. I'm done with all these empty promises. They started with Jeff nine months ago. After that horrible night he promised me he was going to get that son of a gun. But he never did. So don't use that word in front of me. Just do your job. Are we done here? As Illa was talking Sam had his head to the floor. He couldn't bear the pain written all over her face. I'll do everything I can. To find who took your husband away from you. That'll be all. Have a good one ma'am. Back in the cop car. How did it go? Jeff asks with his hands on the wheel. You know. I let her down by letting Kane down that day. I could have done something that night. Sam retorts as he lights up a cigarette. Don't beat yourself up. You did all you could to save her husband. I mean you lost your damn hand for God's sake. It already happened no reason to keep on dwelling on it. All we can do now is find the bastard responsible for this. Sam keeps on smoking his cigarette without saying a word. That's a wrap my friend. Want me to drop you home. I can take the car back to the station.
You've had a long day, Sam, Jeff says as the car stops at a red light. Sure thing, I'd appreciate that a lot. Can we stop at the store next to that one church? I need to get something. Sam replied, sure thing. Sam gets out of the car and looks at his front door as Jeff drives away. He takes a big last puff of his cigarette, drops it, and stomps it out. In his hand sat a bouquet of flowers and a bag of candy he got from the store. He pauses at his front porch, takes a deep breath, and presses the doorbell. Daddy, 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 a young girl's voice shouting in excitement could be heard from inside. The door unlocks, and as Sam tries to push it open the young girl stops him. Dad wait, I have to get off the stool first and take it out of the way. A smile curved itself on Sam's face as he waited. Okay dad you can come in now. Sam was welcomed inside with a huge hug from his daughter. Go give this to mommy, Sam whispered as he handed the bouquet of flowers to his daughter. Sugar, as they called her, took the flowers and ran straight into the kitchen where Sam's wife was. Aw oh, thank you sugar, Sarah's voice could be heard from the kitchen. Sam then headed straight into the kitchen and gave his wife a kiss. How was your day honey? She asked, before Sam gave an answer. The little girl's voice could be heard from the living room. Dad come find me. Sam hugs his wife. My day was interesting. I'll tell you more about it but now. I have to find her. I wonder where my little cookie is. She's going to miss out on all the candy I got her. Sam starts walking around the living room looking for her. I wonder if she's here. He bends over and looks under the glass table. She's not here. Maybe she's right here. His eyes fall behind the couch. She's not here either. Third time's got to be the charm. Sam walks over to the closet. Peekaboo, there you are. I found you sugar. The little girl bursts into a joyous laughter and jumps in her father's arms. You found me dad. You found me. A few hours pass. Sugar, have you brushed your teeth? Sarah shouts from the kitchen with her hands occupied with the dishes. Yes, I have mommy. Sugar's voice came from the living room. Sarah keeps at it. Okay, get ready for bed. Daddy will tuck you in. Sugar was curled up in her father's arms. Eyes stuck on the TV show. You've got school tomorrow, Sugar. Time for bed. Sam said as he got up and took her in his arms. Without an argument, Sugar curled her hands around her father's neck as they headed to her bedroom. Now in bed and all tucked in, Sam reached for the book that laid on the dresser. Where are we? Sam says as he peruses through the book. Dad, where the tortoise started singing. Remember, Sam turns to chapter two of the book. Yes, I remember now. Chapter two. And so the tortoise took off his hat and starts singing to the hare. Sam started reading the story to his daughter. About 30 minutes in. Mama, what is power? The little tortoise asked. Power is. Sam's reading was cut short by his wife. I think she already fell asleep, honey. Sam's eyes turned from the book over to his daughter. Sugar's eyes were shut and her conscious sunk deep in dreamland. He closes the book, rests a kiss on Sugar's forehead and puts the book back on the dresser. Sarah leans over Sam's shoulder, gives Sugar a kiss and whispers, Good night, Sugar. Sam turns off the light on their way out and closes the door. How was your day, honey? Sarah asks Sam who was seated on the edge of the bed cleaning his prosthetic arm with a bristle brush. Where to begin? Where to begin? Sam tells Sarah the whole story of what had happened earlier that day. Sarah leans in and hugs him. Sam rested his head on Sarah's shoulder. Sarah welcomed Sam's head in tears as she patted his back. It's all my fault. I could have done something that night. I could have done something that night. Sarah couldn't help but cry too. Seeing a loved one in such a state could break the toughest of men. Honey, I know you're hurting and I am too. But you have to stop beating yourself up. Sugar and I will always be here for you. All the way, honey. Sam embraces his wife tightly, wipes tears off his face and in a low voice he says, You're right. I don't know what I would do if I lost you or my little cookie. I love you, baby. I love you too. You have to stay strong for me and your daughter. Don't let anger take over. It'll only lead to misery. After a deep silence in each other's arms, his wife says with a smile meeting her teary eyes with Sam's. She had an A on her math test. Our precious little cookie had an A. Sam starts wiping the tears from her wife's face. Our precious cookie, he says as he helps his wife up. Hey coward, open your eyes. The masked man whispers in Sam's ears. What is the definition of insanity? Answer me, he shouts. You see, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over expecting a different result. So why do you keep coming after me? The universe has consequences. I have consequences. The masked man shouts while pointing his pistol at the dead cop he just shot. Illa's husband, Kane. The masked man starts walking back and forth talking to himself. He's about to meet his maker. Should we do it? No, 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 yes, yes. They asked for it. With the axe or the gun. The gun, it's faster. 
know the acts that will send a message. Yes, and they will stop coming after us when they see what we are about to do to him. The masked man picks up an axe that laid on top of a rusted barrel. He brings the axe close to his nose and smells it. Retribution, he says as he walks towards Sam. He picks him up by his armpits and drags him, leaving him next to the barrel. They steal lives. That's all they do. They're thieves. With their hands they tie ours in chains and lead us in cages like animals. Matthew chapter 18 verse 8. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. All your life you've stole people's lives by putting their hands in shackles. It's only fair I take yours, the masked man says as he puts Sam's right hand on the rusted barrel. The masked man kisses the axe, then raises it. No, Sam screams. Sarah holds him tight in her arms. Baby, it's a nightmare. It's just another nightmare. I got you. You're fine. You're fine. Sam's body shaking in Sarah's arms. Tears start falling down her cheeks. You're fine, baby. You're fine. While still in Sarah's arms, Sam starts whispering over and over to himself. What is insanity? What is insanity? What is insanity? Thank you.